Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be talking about interval training, following up on yesterday's conversation. And we're going to talk a little bit more today specifically about uh, performance enhancing benefits of interval training and the health benefits of interval training versus steady state, long, slow cardio. Okay? So yesterday we talked about how interval training is overwhelmingly powerful for helping you burn fat specifically burning fat, right? And uh, if you need to make reference to that, you can just go to yesterday's video. Um, but today I wanna to talk to you about why I use interval training uh, pretty much in all of my fitness programs. And it goes back to when I played soccer, okay? Uh, I was a goalie, so I was never very fit, or I shouldn't say very fit, but I was never very fit running-wise compared to a lot of my teammates, right? So we you know, do our preseason conditioning. I'd always be at the back of the pack, sometimes in the middle, very, very seldomly at the front, especially when I was at the pro level. But the cool thing about about soccer was that, like with any sport, it's not a continuous steady state uh, type of activity, right? Uh, there's a lot of stop and goes, changing of pace, changing direction, uses of different energy systems. And because of that, it actually is very effective at not only burning fat, but improving all aspects of fitness, okay? So with interval training, what I did was uh, when I was playing as a goalie, a lot of my training would be consisting of very high intensity work in training, uh, which is interesting because in games, you know, goaltenders are very often not involved in the play, uh, except for very brief uh, moments. So with my training, a lot of it involved uh, very intense work during training itself. Uh, 30 seconds, diving up and down, jumping over hurdles, back up and down, sprinting forward, back to side to side. Very, very taxing anaerobically, so you get that muscle burn. Um, and that was obviously great. But again, it didn't really transfer over into running, but it, it goes back to specificity, right? So how you train is how you want to train for your sport, okay? Um, so that's kind of my history with uh, personal use of interval training but not so much interval training on a cardio machine, but in a different sense of the term, right? So doing my work for 30 seconds, a minute to recover type of thing, and then going back and forth like that. Now, um, I, you, as a strength conditioning coach uh, with the men's soccer team at the University of Toronto, I've actually stepped down uh, from kind of the hands-on stuff now, because we live out, of, live out of the city, so I'm more, I'm more of a consultant now with the team. I'm not with them all the time anymore. but. The programs I put together for these guys uh, over the past seven years have really revolved around the use of my treadmill trainer programs or derivations of them. Uh, and that's because interval training is very important for soccer players, okay? Now, whether you're a runner, an athlete of any kind, or an average individual looking to improve your fitness level, aerobic endurance, anaerobic endurance, you need to understand that, as I mentioned yesterday, the more time you can spend near your maximum heart rate, the better off you're going to be. Okay, now I'm going to allude to a few different studies here, um, and again, there's a lot of different studies looking at VO2 max improvements, which is maximal aerobic capacity uh, in regards or after using interval training, and it really depends on the study you look at, and some studies look at anywhere from, I'm just going to give you a kind of an aggregate of all the studies here, uh, anywhere from 2 to 24 weeks, and different protocols, right, 2 to 3 times a week. Uh, all sorts of different interval training protocols, right? cycling, running, usually they're done on a cycle ergometer because it's easier to measure that way. But in general, okay, here are the cool things. Um, the results of most of these studies as an aggregate, all of them show an increase in VO2 max above and beyond what is seen in those doing the steady state cardio. And the improvement, uh, again, depends on the length of the study, the type of protocol used is anywhere from about 4% to 46%. That's crazy, right? And uh, again, it depends on uh, the fitness level of the individuals as well. So if you're, not, if you're not fit at all, if you've never worked out before and you start doing interval training for 12 weeks, you're gonna see some massive improvements in your VO2, okay? Uh, same thing with, with trained individuals. You know, if you're already pretty trained, you're gonna need to do a little bit more work to get those smaller improvements. But nonetheless, interval training is the best way to do it because it allows your body to spend more time near its maximum possible level, right? And, that, and that's the key because we need, as, as with anything in life, right, we need to get out of our comfort zone to grow. And it's the same thing with, uh, with fitness. So VO2 max is very important. 
Um, and again, VO2 max, just essentially what this means to you is that you're able to run faster for longer if you're running, okay? Uh, if you're cycling, you're able to cycle at a faster pace against more resistance for longer, right, as an example. So essentially, you're able to work out at a higher intensity for a longer period of time, right? And so if we look at guys like Lance Armstrong, the reason that they're such monsters or specimens, if you want to call them that, is because their VO2 max is ridiculous, right? Um, and, and just as a side note, VO2 max, the sports that involve the most muscle, so typically it's cross-country skiing, rowing, followed by running, in that order, those sports, those athletes have the highest VO2 max because they recruit the most muscle and more muscle involved means more oxygen is required and as a result of that training, uh, you increase your aerobic capacity quite significantly. So that's the big performance enhancing benefit of interval training. And I just wanna go back to soccer for a second because you know we've played, uh, I don't even know how many other teams we've played over the last seven years. The biggest difference I've noticed in, this, in the progression of our team over the last seven years has been the, the greater use of, of intervals, right? And in preseason, we spent a little bit more time running. In the off season, they're doing more strength conditioning uh, in the weight room. As they get closer to the season, it's more kind of specific running for soccer. But during the season, there's virtually no running done at all. It's all with the ball, and it's all sports-specific training with the ball, right? And again, it's short bursts of activity, but at a very high intensity. And it's one of the reasons that our guys are usually, pro you know, from what I've seen and what I've experienced, the, the fittest team in Canada, um, if not, you know, in the top two or three. So it makes a huge difference. You don't need to spend all week running. You can, you know, chop up your workouts in the two or three sessions, uh, and it's very, very effective. Now, one question I have received quite a bit is, you know, how does this work in with weight training? You know, do I do it with weight, weight training before, or after, or whatever? Um, so to answer those questions, if you're doing weight training and interval training on the same day, do your weight training first, interval training at the end. So you don't, the interval training is, inter is gonna deplete your muscle glycogen, it's gonna be very taxing. You don't wanna do that before you start lifting weights, okay? So get the benefit out of the weight training, then finish off with interval training. At the same time, weight training can be your interval training. If you're doing circuit training, for instance, where you're doing, let's say, 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds off. You might be doing squats for 30 seconds, rest for 30, push-ups for 30 seconds, rest for 30, chin-ups for 30 seconds, rest for 30, right? So circuit training is a form of interval training. And if you wanna, you know, if you're gonna do weight training on one day and interval training on the next day, a uh, very simple structure would be like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're gonna do your strength training. Tuesday, Thursday, you would do your interval training, uh, Saturday, Sunday off, okay? Uh, again, two to three times max per week is what you want to do with interval training. It's very taxing on the body. And again, you just have to listen to your body. I mean, you don't kill yourself. Just kind of, you know, schedule it in. But, you know, listen to your body. If you need to do a slower, longer kind of cardio session to recover, right, you, that's fine as well. Okay, but just don't make that the staple of, uh, of your workouts. Okay, so uh, let's just finish off with one more big benefit that interval training has uh, on your health. And that is in regards to insulin and diabetics, okay? Now, insulin has, what it does is, again, is it takes blood out of your, uh, sorry, it takes blood, it takes sugar out of the blood and into your cells. And it has a specific trans, uh, transporter that it activates at the cellular level, okay? It's called a GLUT4 transporter. And insulin, when it takes glucose and takes it to the cell, that transporter needs to be there in order for glucose to get into the cell. The cool thing about exercise in general, and a specifically high intensity exercise like interval training, is that it does the exact same thing. Okay, that's cool. So you could do an interval training session for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is, and you'll get the same GLUT4 transporter response at the cellular level as you would if you had ins high insulin levels or insulin levels you know, that were circulating in the blood. And that's great because specifically after exercise is when those cells are most receptive to taking up blood glucose. And so that's a very, very powerful thing. And you know, there's a, a lot of these actual, it's, it's interesting because a lot of these interval training studies have used type two diabetic patients. And uh, I just wanna give you some stats again. Depending on the study, they've seen improvements uh, a decrease in insulin levels, which is good because you don't want high insulin levels throughout the blood all the time. 
And the second thing they've seen is a decrease in insulin resistance, which means that the cells are more sensitive to insulin, which means that there doesn't need to be as much insulin to get the same amount of uh, sugar out of the blood. So there's a decrease in insulin resistance, and insulin resistance is essentially diabetes, okay? So if we, we don't want that, we want less of it. So these interval training studies have shown a 23% to 56% decrease in insulin resistance, depending on obviously the study and the population use. Now in a healthy demographic, people who don't have diabetes, it's on the lower end, so generally like a 23% um, decrease in insulin resistance in a healthy population. Here's the cool thing. Those with diabetes already have the greatest, show the greatest impact of interval training, right? So that 56% that group, decrease in insulin resistance, it's in those patients or those people with type 2 diabetes that are showing those responses. And that is massive, okay? Because if you can, again, I'm not a huge fan of pharmaceuticals and drugs and all that kind of nonsense. If you can manage diabetes, and, and again, it's reversible, 100% reversible through lifestyle, okay? And again, if you think that you're going to go for a walk seven days a week and cure diabetes or reverse it, it's going to take a long time, maybe never. But if you can add in one, two, maybe three quick 10, 20 minute high intensity interval training sessions a week, you can accelerate your ability to reverse diabetes. Okay, that's really powerful. And in combination with a healthy diet, obviously it's, you know, it's very important. So that's a, that's a massively important uh, health benefit. And needless to say, we talked yesterday about fat loss, right? Well, if interval training helps you burn fat, then your chances of storing more fat and becoming overweight and obese is obviously less. And that's, that's you know, very important as well because if, you, if you're not fat, then <laughs> you kind of, take away a lot of the diseases that plague uh, a lot of North Americans. So interval training is massively important. Uh, I, from a performance enhancing perspective, from a uh, overall health perspective, from a fat burning perspective, it is more efficient and more effective than let's go for a nice easy walk or a nice light jog for an hour and a half, okay? And the other thing is that it doesn't compromise your muscle mass. It's a very short burst activity, and as we mentioned in the last video, it increases growth hormone, which is important for maintaining muscle mass. And you don't get that when you're doing long duration marathon type of runs or, or, or workouts, okay? So um, that is pretty much everything I wanted to cover for today. Again, if you have any questions at all, just let me know below the video. And be sure to stay tuned for tomorrow. I have a very special announcement to make which will really uh, bring all of this stuff together for you, and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's video, and uh, in the meantime, have a great day. Hope, actually, I hope you had a great Halloween. Uh, I, I totally forgot, it's, you know, it's Tuesday of the day after Halloween. I haven't even you know, said anything about that. Anyways, if you have any candies, this is my final thing for the video. If you have any candies or chocolates left over from Halloween, throw them in the fire, burn them. Don't let them sit around the house, because if they sit around, we have a whole bowl of chocolates upstairs, they gotta go. I mean, I'm telling you, because if that stuff is in the house, <laughs> it's not good. Um, so the best way to do it, just get rid of it. Throw it away. Don't even give it to people. That's, that's not encouraging their health either, right? Um, burn it, just get rid of it. Uh, you'll be much better off, and uh, let's get back on the healthy bandwagon. So uh, with that said, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.